come to the third and last part of the programming tutorial for looking with Python at small angle scattering data. In the first part, we had a quick introduction to Jupyter Notebooks and a quick introduction to Python. Yesterday, the second part, we loaded and plotted some small angle scattering data. And today, we will implement a small angle scattering model and fit this model to the data. That's what we do today. And in principle, it's similar to what Tim showed earlier with this view. So in this example of some Python code using the thus view models, yeah, for fitting some data. In this case, um, with thus view, you have the advantage that you can uh, use a larger library of um, small angle scattering models to fit to data, and it's a very, really good uh, shortcut. But um, in my example, this is a bit more um, low level. So here we will today um, implement our own sphere model from scratch and fit that, that to data with some polydispersity. And this is quite, yeah, a right for one hour, but perhaps, um, yeah, I would like to do this in a whole to, yeah, show this at least once and, yeah, how this could be done. You can use this as example and do uh, modifications. I'm using the sample data from yesterday and the data we also analyzed with the program with the other programs today with uh, silver nanoparticles. So here we are again at the, at the Google uh, Colab platform and on the left side I can see at the um, file repository I downloaded the file al already and for testing and um, delete it again. And now if I if I create a code cell and write the uh, exclamation mark and the word wget, so exclamation mark means that the following command is, ex is run on the shell. It's like a Linux command which is available on many Linux systems and every, every word I prefix with an exclamation mark is um, interpreted as a shell command that's not Python, that's just a command being run on the operating system in the background as your user. So um, in this case it instructs it to run this command uh, wget and yeah, download the file I put, yeah, and download the URL I gave him. So I will do this again. I showed this also yesterday. Quickly, I can here remove the output, it's a bit lot, and then I can see in the file view that I got the data file of the silver particles. Oh, there's a question in the chat. Yes, in principle, yes. So here we are on the cloud platform of uh, in, in, in Google Colab. So this also works on Windows the same way in the cloud, but um, you can, you can do this in I, the command. The command W get uh, is probably not available on Windows. That's true. On Windows, it depends. <laughs> it depends on how you installed a uh, Jupyter Lab. So, um, if you installed it with Anaconda, it could be. I'm not sure that there are some Unix tools included. But in the Windows case, when you have it on your own local box, you don't have this problem because you can easily. Um, put your data file somewhere in a directory and start the um, Jupyter uh, notebook there or yeah, use it from that directory. Curl is, would, would also work, but then you would need to provide another parameter, I think, minus O, capital O or something like that. No, here's it. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the Python command. This way. Here you get an extensive list of options and I think with curl you would need the minus O. So it says, it tells the program to write, to write the data in an, uh, to a file which is, which has the same name than on the server side. So that's what you want to do here. Yeah. Because with curl, without command, uh, any arguments, it will just uh, show you the contents of the file and not create a new file. Now that we got the data, we can, yeah, I will um, hide this here behind a comment so that it doesn't load again. And then we will, uh, in the same way as yesterday, load pandas and um, yeah, create a um, variable for the file name. 
that's um, a g n zero zero eight point dot and I can load it into a data frame with the pandas function read csv providing the fn data variable I used. I put that in a variable for um, being able to use this later, for example, for... Um, no, oh, I'm not done yet. I put that in a variable to be able to use it as a plot label, so I can have the word without typing it again in the plot. I will show this soon. and. Here I define the separator to use only white space or all kinds of white space. And I define the names of the columns in that data. So here it's uh, lower Q, capital I for intensity and the uncertainty of I. And that should be fine. And then I put it as last statement to get a nice rendered view of the table. I load it here just from file. The next point um, would be that we want to create a skirting model. Now that we got the data, we plotted it yesterday, um, we need, now I put it in the text box, we need a scattering model. And for that I prepared some text which, will, which I will just um, copy over here for uh, speed improvement. First of all, we need a scattering vector. Typically, when you implement an own model, you need some kind of values where you inter calculate the model at. And that's uh, why you need to generate a scattering model. I won't do this here because we loaded it already from, from the file. In the file, there's a Q column available, which we just loaded and we will use that. And What we do next here is implementing a sphere model as provided here, given as um, F, uh, capital F, um, dependent on the Q vector and a, a radius. So it's then the um, sinus and cosinus functions here, um, divided by Q times R. And this is what we can really nicely um, uh, define in a, in a function or write a function for. So I create a function with def and call it sphere if I type correctly. This gets q, as I said, the q vector values um, where it should be evaluated at and a radius parameter. Additionally, what we need is the scaling n. We saw this in um, SASFIT earlier and eta is the contrast. So in the simplest case, or in the relative measurement case, eta and n is basically the same um, from the math point of view, but from the physical point of view it's uh, of course quite something different. And uh, for reuse I define an internal variable in that function which is called um, qr um, by multiplying q with the radius I provided. And um, then I return the actual the actual um, model calculation. So in the core we have sinus. Sinus is not available by default. That's why I import the numpy module for that. And I call numpy sinus from QR and subtract the product of QR with numpy um, cosinus of QR. Put a some parentheses around and divide it again some parentheses to group the group the individual statements divided by Q, QR um, times 3. Here I use the dot to indicate that it's a floating point number and should not be um, uh, reduced to lower precision. 
And what's missing here is the scaling. So I have n times times three times eta. Nice to have is always in the code editor that it highlights the matching parentheses or square brackets. I see here that the parent, the group of the um, sinus cosinus terms is uh, in correctly grouped by the parentheses. Then uh, n three and eta is, um, is grouped here. What I don't want is n inside this parentheses because I need to square this. I need to calculate the squared amplitude. The next thing is to test this model. If it calculates something, that at least something comes out here. And for that I provide again the data frame dot q for the q vector and for example for the radius 25. Then I get a new column with the intensity values of this model. Here I want to mention, I didn't, um, I did mention it, um, in the beginning when defining the sphere function, I can assign default values to some parameters. So here the n and the eta got the default argument equal to one. So if I don't um, provide it in the actual call, like here, then it uh, takes the one for n and eta as I defined in the function definition. So it's kind of a, a shorthand to not being um, forced to always provide numbers which are the same basically or don't matter, matter at the time. So next thing would be plotting the sphere or this model. So I take another code cell and again <coughs> import matplotlib the pyplot for matplotlib, as we did in a previous session. And here I do plot the data frame Q against, yeah, in principle, we could store here the form factor in a variable, let it calculate and use that variable here for plotting. And Label it with model. So we should see something already. That's not quite what I, what I expected here, but interesting. It could be that somehow I um, mixed up the parentheses. Let me check again. Hmm. Let us um, print out the actual value. It's much too small. This is strange. Mm. What did we load here is um, Q vector. It's 0 0.03 until 14. So now I can also already include a debugging session. <laughs> so finding out what the problem might be. not dropping but increasing actually. That's the problem and one thing is we will have a look at what the actual Q times R is. But for that we only use the first couple of values. So the first five for example. I don't want to see the F, the result here, only what I print. And this looks quite okay. So what is it at the end? Minus, minus five. It's also okay. Then let's have a look at the actual result of the function calls here. Did I mixed up the functions? No. Okay, this looks okay. Next thing is, yeah. Ah, one asterisk was missing. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Very good spotters. 
I see, I see. That needs to have the same length. So it always complains about um, if you only the, the form factor I calculated had only five values, while as the um, Q vector here I provide has 500 or 500 values, and then it has a header problem with that. So I'm happy that you can continue here <laughs> because time is running. Yeah, what's missing here is some uh, formatting of this um, plot. So basically, lots of things I showed yesterday. Yeah, we, we set a label of the axis, a title for the plot. Uh, we set tell it that it needs um, scale it in logarithmic in both uh, directions, and x and y, and uh, grid, and show, showing a legend to see the um, yeah that I called it label a uh, model, a label that I call the curve model and um, this is a, a formatting of the plot which we will need later too so i write a function for yeah making a shorthand uh, a shortcut for this so i call the function pretty plot and indent these um, statements a bit i can do this by selecting the selecting the lines and then pressing the top button this um, moves the selected lines and some amount of spaces to the right, which tells it that those are now part of this pretty plot function. I don't call this function yet, so it resets to the um, formatting we had before. I need to call this after every plot, but only the call, not the definition. So in this case, I get this nicely formatted again. We can see this effect. Um, yeah, I will use this function later on. For example, now we can switch over to yeah plotting the model along with the data. Yeah, or we can just add this here. So I can copy this line, and instead of using the plot function from pandas from the data frame, I use here the matplotlib function because. I want both of them in the same plot. Here I change the label to the file name I prepared. And now I get uh, a label of the file name and the model. One thing is missing, it's not uh, only a simple plot, but one with arrow bars. And for this I can then provide the information where to get the arrow bar from. I use this intensity values. Um, loaded from file. They have now the same color, that's why we don't see them. And then I can add, for example, the arrows in a gray color. Oh, interesting. I can keep it. Um, perhaps we set the colors um, explicitly, so we can tell it that the model should be red and that um, the color of the data should be yeah, let's make it um, blue or something. That perhaps hurts a bit the eyes, but okay. And the um, arrow bars are now gray, so that we can um, yeah, keep them apart from the actual data points. Next step would be now um, fitting those two curves. So what we want to achieve is we want to get the model curve uh, match the data curve and for that, in the notebook environment, um, there's a um, useful package called lmfit for the Slavenberg markward fitting. It's often used routine for this classical curve fitting. This routine or this kind of algorithm is also used in SASFIT and also in um, SASVIEW. To use this, I first need to set up some parameters. I create a variable and initialize this with the parameters object and then I create some parameters. I add some parameters to it. So the first one would be for the scaling parameter. It gets also a default value which I set here. It's one. And now the important part is I can uh, define the, the limits, the boundaries of this um, variable a min and a max value. 
So it should not go below zero and the max value it set it to a high, very high number. Um, oh, not, it, it's very. That says basically if this um, parameter should be fitted or not. So for the next ones, I copy this line and the next one will be etter. Is also one. Minimum the same, maximum also, but should not be the right because it's um, uh, constant. And of course, I want to have the radius. We know that's pretty small particles. We can set this to a default value of 10. And let's say the maximum value for the radius would be 150. Now that they are configured, I can show them by using the object uh, function pretty print, which gives me a nice table. And now it tells me that it doesn't have the LMFET module. For that, I can use again the shell command to install it. We have seen this earlier. So I let Google now install the LMFET package and disable it because we only need to install it once and then it should be available. Doesn't. Parameters. I typo. Yeah, now we get a table. Next thing is then that we want to create a model using those parameters. In the same way, from LMFit we import the model class and of course we need to create an instance of it. I use model, uh, call model and give it the sphere function. That's, a, that's the name of the function we defined earlier for calculating here, where we had this um, little uh, calculation problem. It's just a function name. And we have to make sure that the name of the parameters of the function are the same names as I um, used here in the parameters. So that's um, where the names are matched actually. Model needs to be an upper case. Okay, that worked. Similar to the code above here, we can now use the model to um, plot the model we just created. It is uh, similar to what to what we used before. So let's plot just the error bar. Uh, yeah, the error bar, the, the loaded data from file. And here we can just use the pretty plot function to format the plot nicely. And additionally, I want to have the model, but not the preprocessed values we had we used earlier, but we can use now the model eval function, which evaluates the model at the given parameter values, which um, we created before. And here, for evaluating the model, we have to give it also a Q value for, for the function I provided. And that should be it. Yeah, works the same way. So here <clears throat> I did this for testing if this model works and if this model, yeah, what this model actually calculates. So when fitting this model, it's basically a way for testing if the values the model spits out are kind of useful or make sense. So that's why using directly this model for plotting and comparing with the data. So the call for fitting works uh, similar. I create a fit variable, fit result, and use the model I defined before, calling the fit routine, and provide it with the intensity data, the parameters, and the Q vector, because the Q is the parameter of the model of the sphere function. That's why I have to provide it here this way. And additionally, I want to provide some weights. In this case, it's the uncertainty, which goes here in 
data frame does not allow me to type this. <laughs> so this uh, calculated something and we can have a look at the fit result. This generates also some nice formatted output where you can look at the values it found. Yeah, this is uh, kind of does not make much sense yet, but um, yeah, because we see here also the the um, model and the data curve does not really um, match qualitatively. But let's see if it yeah what the result looked like. Not just from the statistics, but let's plot this. There's a function a plot fit for this um, result. And again, that's why I created a shorthand function for this. We need to um, format this. And here you see that it kind of matches the model function in the beginning of the data, loaded data, but not overall. This is why this is because there's a polydispersity in the data, which we yeah don't have here. We use the monodisperse sphere only, which is the most simple case. And this will be the next step to improve. So we only have five minutes left, but I try to make this quick. So what we need first is uh, probability density, like um, the polydispersity function. I prepared some text to show this. So what we need to implement now is here a, a PDF. I chose the log norm function, which is rather flexible. And this function looks like this, written, yeah, written to Python code. It use, it accepts a median value, a sigma for the, for the width of the distribution and, um, the actual x, which is um, the radius at which the distribution is calculated. What would be nice now would be uh, to have a plot of this, to see how it looks actually. For this we need to come up with an x value, so it's basically like um, going through possible radius values. For this I use the numby function linspace to generate some um, linear range of radii from very small ones to three times the median. The median I calculate the uh, function at and how many radii I want to have must be given. So the median I chose, I want to configure, I want to um, set the width of the thing and the density, so the number of points. For the median I choose 10 nanometers, the sigma is 0.1 and using 200, 200 values. If I let this calculate, it gives me an array with, this, with those values. To get the distribution, I create a new variable calling dist. I call the log norm function with this generated um, linear space and the parameters. So the sigma and the median value. Looking at that gives, should give an equally large um, array, but now with the result of this distribution function. And this can be plotted, of course. It goes the same way as before, but now it's not in log space, but it can be plotted linearly. So I use the x values of the distribution. And this should give me the distribution. I can also um, provide it with the label. And another thing we need here, another helper, is um, that we want to um, calc calculate the integral of the curve. Let's need it later for normalization. For shorthand, I create a function integrate, um, which gets x and y values. In this way, I can easily change the um, actual algorithm used for integration. 
I use, I just uh, type this here for the sake of time saving. And let me copy this, what I prepared. So it uses the Simpson rule, integration routine from the SciPy package. SciPy is a similar package as NumPy, which has a large um, algorithm data, uh, algorithm catalog for, for also integration and other uh, numerical routines. And I yeah, just pass on here the x vector and the y vector and use the absolute value of this integral. And now I can calculate the area under the curve quite easily. Oh, it doesn't know this yet, so I have to... Uh, it also needs SIP, of course, it's um, first mentioned here. So I import SIP, SIP I, then I run the code again, and now it tells me, okay, the area under the curve is 1. So this helps me to make sure that the uh, formula of the uh, distribution function above here is working correctly. So um, it's um, normalized in this kind of notation. And yeah, calculating the integral is just a check to make sure that it really um, is what I think it is. So uh, next thing to integrate it, uh, incorporate it in our model, we have to kind of adjust our model first. I can show this too, what it should look like mathematically. We had previously only the intensity function, the sinus and cosinus, and now we need to calculate an integral over oh, the product of the intensity and the probability distribution of the uh, different sizes. So um, it just calculates um, how many of a certain size of the intensity is there actually, or um, said differently, it weighs the intensity by the the amount of uh, particles of a certain size which are there. From the numerical part, it um, just it also adds another dimension of uh, calculations because for for every q, the n integral must be calculated over the full distribution. I need to define it new because this new function will use the previously um, defined sphere function. So the new function is for the polysperity has different slightly different parameters. So it first gets uh, the q of course and the median value and the width of the distribution. And again, we need a scaling value and uh, a contrast and a contrast value. And then, similar as above, we need to calculate, we, this time we need to calculate the uh, radius um, vector. So it's similar to this um, lin space. In the same way, I um, it doesn't matter how, how broad it is or how large this is because it basically is decided by the log norm, by the um, distribution function, this gets zero and all places where it's not defined and then I can make it as large as I want, it just costs computation time. That's why I keep the parameters here. After three times the median value it should be uh, it should be at zero approximately or good enough. Next thing is um, calculating a weight out of it by actually calling the distribution function with this um, generated radius values and the parameters for the position, the median and the width of the distribution. The next thing is then that I weigh the actual sphere function we had above with this um, distribution. So I calculated the weight first and then apply the weight to the intensity which I created before. Yeah. Finally, this needs to be integrated to get a single value for the Q. This is just a definition. I will run this. Let's um, call it with some values. Mm, count as a global variable. I think this will work because I configured count here above. So in this example, it's fine, but uh, certainly, yeah, you could just uh, hard code this. So like telling it should do 100 points, for example. Yeah, but it's right, one should not uh, use global uh, variables too much here, because when you move it, it could be that count is not available or changes uh, to a different value which you did not intend, then it gets, yeah, you can get lost really quickly. But there are other problems, I will come back or show next. So, um, 
now I define my um, parameter values, the median and the median at 100, but it's a bit large for the sample, let's say 10, and sigma of 0 0.05 and n and eta. Let's just calculate this before plotting to see if it works. So again, I call this um, the data frame Q and the parameters I mentioned. When I run this, I get an error from the numerical part that it cannot broadcast shapes together. If you get this error, it often means that you want to do an operation with some uh, different sized arrays. So for example, uh, typically if you multiply arrays, it's just a multiplication of the elements and this only works if the arrays have the same length. This could be an issue. And in this case, what I did is using the original sphere function, And it has to be modified a bit because it now works with um, vectors. And uh, let me show, for example, this case here. In this case, um, originally radius was a single value. If I get a vector q, which I loaded from file and multiply it by a value for the radius, it's just um, that the, value, the radius value, for example, 10 is multiplied, uh, multiplied to the q values. So, it's a n to one relation and it works just fine. But now the radius is a vector. So what does it do? The vector has also um, a different length than the q value. What I intend, what I wanted to do is that it um, multiplies every radius value I provided it with, with the full q vector so that I get as many modified q vectors as there are radius values. So it's kind of a matrix, which is uh, built here. And I, there's a special command for this multiplication. It's called um, vector multiplication. That's what we need here. It uses the numpy function outer. So the result is then a matrix, a rectangular matrix as product of the Q and the radius vectors. But then I have to do another trick because you might run into problems when you um, calculate this now with a single value. So the goal is here um, that this function works with only single values provided for the radius and also vectors provided for the radius. And in this way, I, for this to happen, I um, added a test to see if, this, if the outcome of this QR is um, what kind of uh, dimension is in the second. So if it's only a single vector, then it should um, return only a single vector and not a matrix. So it's, the problem is if I don't do this, the output of the QR is then always um, some kind of um, matrix format, which will waste more errors. So this is only needed if you want to have flexible flexibility to call this function with single values for the radius and also vectors, so for it to work. And also shows as an example how to solve these issues. And then I get just fine the intensity of the sphere with the um, size distribution. And this can, yeah, this we want to plot also, or perhaps we just create a model out of it and plot it then. Let me add the model here. And um, we can copy, just copy what we had before. So this cell perhaps, have a look at it. One thing to add, we also need to modify the parameters. So as we see here, I created a model, but um, the model is based on the sphere PD function, which is new, which has different parameters. They have also different names. And that's why we have to um, modify the original parameters structures by adding the, act the new values and remove the old ones for completeness. So to make it a bit quicker, I add the R median value, yeah, which is a default value of 10, let's say. It should be the right. And I also want to add the sigma as a um, fittable parameter, or well, a parameter that should be um, optimized. 
but there's the old value still left, the old parameter, the old um, radius parameter. I can just uh, move it like that. It uh, tests if the radius is in parameters and then, then removes this parameter. And I can let it show me the parameters and then I can see which are there and what uh, values are they configured at. This should now work with the plotting. Yeah, here we see that the model curve, the red one, is much more um, smoothed out than the uh, sphere function without a polydispersity. And this now will much better fit to the data loaded from file. So, again, I um, use a model and call the fit function, provides intensity, the new parameters. Yeah, and the same as before, basically and let it give me the fit report. I remove this because it's more ASCII style, the print, and um, only the fit result is better formatted. Now we see here a, much, a value which makes much more sense, the median of around 4. Sounds good. Plotting this will hopefully show the result. The problem is here now that the best fit is um, hidden by the, um, by the data, which is a which has a large blue circles. There's a parameter to um, get this uh, best fit curve in the foreground. So it's just a, a matter of which one is plotted first of the curves. So by providing this Z order equals five setting, I tell it that the um, best fit should get should be plotted in the foreground and uh, formatting it a bit better we can see that yeah roughly it um, agrees to the data the plotted model what's still missing here is a background because it just vanishes here but yeah the overall agreement is rather nice i think that's uh, as an example to um, how to do this uh, curve fitting with just Python and a notebook and Colab or JupyterLab. Yeah, I will update and provide um, the, the notebooks and the GitHub um, repository I showed earlier here. It's already uploaded. The day three contains um, what I used here as a source or as guide for myself. It should be loaded just fine. There's a bit much more text in between. Yeah, it's important to just um, try it out and um, give it yeah a try in a, in a quiet hour or two and and um, try to yeah follow and also uh, what often helps is looking up what the parameters are um, where they are defined and what they actually do or yeah what's written about them. That's it basically. Thank you very much for your attention.